Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. So, I came across this information. I'd not heard it before, and I feel this info is an interesting companion piece to a video I put up a couple of weeks ago. Um, I don't know if you remember, I put up a video about hypnotism. It's up at hugotalks.com, it's not on YouTube, which was this guy who used to be a stage hypnotist back in the 90s. He would hypnotize people on stage and he stated that many of the psychological tricks he would employ were the same tactics now being used by the government and the media and the advertising over the last year and a half. Uh, Much of it was to heighten people's senses to get them to be more susceptible to influence and suggestion. So anyhow, I came across this CIA document online from 1963. It's called the Kubark Counterintelligence Interrogation. And this document was kept locked away in the vaults and was approved for release in 1997. So it was hidden away for 34 years. And this document has details of the tactics and psychological operations the CIA would use on many people and many things. And in particular, this strategy called the Alice in Wonderland technique, and especially how to interrogate an individual and break them basically to get them to comply. It says here, the aim of the Alice in Wonderland or confusion technique is to confound the expectations and conditioned reactions of the interrogatee. So they would say, have about three interrogators who would just bombard the subject with unrelated questions, doublespeak, things that don't make sense, questions that conflicted with one another. And as soon as the subject tried to answer a question, another interrogator would follow up by interrupting any answer the subject had and would then ask another unrelated and illogical query. And this continues on and on. Sometimes two or more questions are asked at the same time. On occasions, the questions or queries would be altered in pitch and in tone. They may be shouted, they may be whispered. No pattern of conversation is allowed to develop. Any answer is interrupted by a different question from a different interrogator. And this bombardment continued until the subject is not only disorientated, confused and bewildered, but the subject's understanding of normal conversation is replaced by an eerie meaninglessness. The subject may start to laugh and stop taking it seriously. But as it continues over a longer period of time, of many hours or many days even, the subject's understanding of what constitutes normality is eroded and the situation mentally they find themselves in is so difficult to come to, come to grips with, they end up becoming more willing to comply just to get back to a normal conversation. Which is something We have heard a lot of late from governments and the media, you know, if you want to get back to normal, do this. If you want to get back to normal, do that. It says here the subject is accustomed to a world that makes sense, at least to him, a world of continuity and logic, a predictable world. He clings to this world to reinforce his identity and powers of resistance. The confusion technique, the Alice in Wonderland technique, is designed not only to obliterate the familiar, but to replace it with the weird, or as they call it today, the new normal. As the process continues, day after day as necessary, the subject begins to try to make sense of the situation, which becomes mentally intolerable, he is likely to make then significant admissions or even to pour out his story and comply with the interrogator's wishes just so he can get back to normal. And it also states in the CIA document that this tactic could well be used on a large number of people. It says it can be used in a mainstream application. It could be used to force a controlled narrative onto an unsuspecting public through the use of psychological operations, tactics spread through the mainstream media. And is this not the situation that we continually find ourselves in now? I mean, everything seems back to front, does it not? Up is down. Not much is making sense. 
I've lost count of the amount of times the government have con contradicted themselves, saying one thing and then doing another, promising something and then breaking that promise the next day. It's deliberate, is it not? Is it to keep, it's to keep the public confused and bewildered. I mean, it may not be as direct as the Alice in Wonderland CIA technique of interrogation from the 60s, but it's a mainstream media version of it that is continuously being pumped out. Could well, and it is having the same effect. How many times do we find ourselves looking at the stories or the news headlines and saying, oh, come on, whatever next? Or, oh, it's getting crazier by the minute, etc. Oh, this doesn't make any sense. The world's gone mad. It's illogical. It's not just the current situation, which albeit has effectively turbocharged this output in the last 18 months, but this has been going on for years. And interestingly enough, it states that this Alice in Wonderland technique, funnily enough, it works particularly well with the orderly and obstinate type. So it works brilliantly on people who are very set in their ways, who have a lot of order in their lives, who have been trained well to do as they are told by the establishment. In other words, you could call them the normies. And it's not just on this subject. We have many other jarring agendas that we are being bombarded with, which seem a little strange to say the least. The LGBTQ agenda, which is everywhere. Now, I'm not against people doing whatever they want to do. I don't care. But do we need to hear about it all the time? Does every corporation need to change its logo to rainbow colors for a month or two? Do we need to keep hearing about it in regards to the Olympics? I mean, you know this is an agenda that is, it's not a movement, it's an agenda. It's forced, it's artificially being promoted. And you can see that at the Olympics. I mean, look at this person who got a silver medal at the shot put, wearing the mask as well. I mean, wearing a mask whilst doing the sport and getting a lot of press attention because it's pushing the normalization of wearing masks. And it's a very freaky one at that. Look, I mean, look at the still. It's like a horror movie. I mean, these are very odd sights to behold. And then, of course, we had all of the UFO stories a few months back. Seeing politicians talking about UFOs and governments releasing footage and all of this. It's all very odd. There's much weirdness around, along with everything else that is going on. I mean, are we being put into Alice in Wonderland or is it being used on us? I mean, when I look on social media, I hear people saying things like, have I mistakenly walked into the Twilight Zone? No, but the mainstream media may make you think that in order for you to have an urge to return to normality, in order to comply with their wishes so as to get back to normal. This is why I always say mainstream media, well, you, you should switch it off. But observe, if you're going to watch it, observe it, analyze it, but don't be consumed by it. Don't let it suck you in. Don't let it consume you. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting. The Alice in Wonderland technique from the CIA from back in the 1960s. Is there something like that happening today, but on a bigger level? Is that why we have so many normies doing what they are doing and not questioning anything? Is it a combination of this and what that fellow was saying in the hypnotist video? I'd say it's a combination of all of these things and probably stuff we don't even know. And to overcome it, I think we need to have a strength, a strong central focus, an independent will, which I think many of the people who watch this channel have. Stay strong, keep the faith. If you know what your opponent's gonna do before they make their move, you know how to counter them. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to the tribe at hugotalks.com, a place for like-minded souls who don't follow the herd.